Hello again, I am Bloody, and I'm loving the huge burst of new energy the Fallout fandom is experiencing right now thanks to the TV show's revitalizing powers. Bringing back old fans, hooking in new fans, and just making everyone have a bunch of fun, basically, with this wonderful, beloved franchise. Fallout 4, originally released in 2015, and it is getting a big new shiny next-gen update this week in just a few days when this video goes live. It might have already happened, depending on when you get to this video, making it work properly on today's consoles, which <laughs> it really didn't before. Yikes. Watch my video about that if you can stomach the ridiculousness of it. And while I've been neck deep in Fallout 76 for weeks now, I've been very anxiously awaiting the update to start a brand new playthrough of Fallout 4. And if you are taking a similar ride, or are brand new to the game, sucked in by the show and the next-gen update to news you've probably seen, well... Here's a bunch of early game tips to get you up and going with a bunch of different weapon types, a pile of ammo, full set of armor, healing items, food, crafting, loot, nice and quick, even a set of power armor, multiple power cores for that power armor, and even more, a helpful companion. And all in the first hour of gameplay, and all without even starting the first main quest line. In other words, if you are brand new to the game, you can watch this video and be safe from spoilers as well. So, first things first. The map design in this game's opening is very cleverly done. It'll kind of seamlessly just lead you pretty directly to naturally walk towards one of the first major quest lines. All the roads, all the sight lines just kind of guide you that way. It's really good game design. But even before you start down that literal road, it is a good idea to carefully loot all of the houses in your old neighborhood as you pass through it. There's some useful materials in here. Ammo, weapons, consumables, check everywhere. Even the rooftops. Hintity hint hint. And especially look for this blue house on the corner. Behind it, you'll find a root cellar. And inside that root cellar, a pile of materials, more food, purified water, ammo, junk, a first aid box with some lovely stuff in there, and some gold bars to sell off for fast cash. You'll have to come back for that safe at some other time though, as you won't have any lockpick bobby pins with you just yet. Don't worry, we'll get some real soon, and I'll show you exactly where. Aside from the consumables and weapons and whatnot, basically everything you can pick up in this game is useful in some way. The junk items contain crafting materials you'll be wanting for the extensive armor and weapon modding systems and for settlement building. After your looting, but before you leave Sanctuary, hit up the workbench, activate it, and then store all of that junk you just harvested from the homes of your long-dead neighbors. You don't need it in your pockets weighing you down, but you will need it for later, so stash it. As you leave Sanctuary, you won't be able to miss the dead raider and the mongrel he fought to the mutual annihilation. Loot them, obviously. But then hop up here at the base of the statue. There's a rucksack of a few more goodies you'll be wanting. So now, already, you haven't even left Sanctuary yet, and you've got yourself a small selection of various weapons and ammo and healing items, and there's so much more to be had before you keep going down the obvious road here, which leads to the first of the main quest lines. So, what we do next? We skip around the outside of the nearby lake. Counterclockwise is my choice. It really doesn't matter. You can do it in either direction, but counterclockwise is what's worked for me. Take a wander up that hillside, and you'll find this skinny chap right here. He's probably not going to need that snub nose 44 revolver or its ammo anymore. And oh, hey, look, bobby pins. Hey, you remember that safe from way back when? <laughs> Guess what you can do now? Mr. Tall, Pale and Slender here also really doesn't need the Radaway and the Radex and the medications up top here either. They're yours now as well. Keep going around the lakeside and you'll find some raiders and their dog. Delete their vital organs with the weapon of your choice. Raid their remains for more guns, more ammo and whatnot. Their campsite nearby also has some tasty red meat snacks for you. Keep going on up another hill and you'll see a big satellite dish on the horizon nearby. We'll come back to that later on, but remember it. Meanwhile, to the left, or north on the map, I suppose, you can find a crashed military aircraft with some previously owned power armor just standing there for anyone to take. You won't be actually taking it just yet, as it's got no juice, but we can come back for it later. Don't worry, it's still going to be there. Or, because you do get some other power armor choices pretty quickly in the game, you can just take the bits off it and use those later for replacements or repairs or whatnot. Now, just another little hop northward, and you'll discover the robotics disposal ground. 
Here you will find a robot type you might come to fear. They're cranky, but this one is shut down, so don't panic. But right next to him is a trunk, and inside that trunk is a precious and kind of rare fusion core. Just the thing to get that power armor chugging along if you want to go back for it. I would wait. I would save this for later. If you head inside the small building over here, though, you can snatch up the Hot Rodder magazine, which will unlock a cool-ass paint job for your future power armor. Then you can yoink the holotape from the terminal, which you can now shove into your Pip-Boy and use it to reactivate that big robot we just saw, which is a really, really stupid and very dangerous idea. Mr. Sentrybot here is made entirely out of angry murder. However... Mr. Sentrybot here, once activated, can also be very, very useful. By using the holotape again, this time you can send a self-destruct command. Once it pops, you can harvest two more precious fusion cores from its smoking steel corpse. Not so scary now, are you, big guy? Now, don't leave the junkyard just yet. There's more for you here, believe it or not. Have a poke around and you will find yourself a fat man. If you are unfamiliar with Fallout, basically a fat man is a slingshot for little nuclear bombs. <laughs> yes, seriously. Consider this your oh crap weapon for now. Mini nukes are precious, uh, they're not super easy to come by, especially early game, but they are very powerful, so use it wisely. Now we can head back towards the lake. On the shoreline up here, you'll find some leg armor just going begging. And inside the suitcase next to that leg armor, there is some more armor. This is RNG though, so maybe you find one piece, maybe you find both arms and a chest piece. Luck of the draw here, I'm afraid. But it will have something, and it will be significantly better than the literal nothing you are wearing right now. Keep on going around the lake. You'll be on the North Shore side now. You'll find a little shack with a raider and his dog and a sleepy junkie. Uh, a few aggressive choices later and all of that stuff, the weapons, the ammo and their drugs are now yours. Right about now you can hop across a narrow spot in the river that feeds the lake back into Sanctuary. Time to offload all that junk and loot to clean up your inventory again and free up some space in your pockets. Now from Sanctuary, head along the western shoreline this time. Along a bit, there's a banged up truck transport tank thing. You can snatch up a helmet from here, but be swift and don't hang around too long, because that damn thing was shipping a whole bunch of nuclear waste, and your Pip-Boy's little clicking noises are telling you to move along before too much of your lovely green health bar becomes red with radiation poisoning. And bam, just like that, just that fast, you'll have a full set of armor. Well, hopefully, you'll at least be close to a full set, depending on how kind that suitcase's RNG was to you back there. You won't be winning any style points here, but hey, beggars and choosers, right? And it is, of course, again, way better than your skimpy blue vault suit for what comes next. Now you can go back to the original path. You can head down to the red rocket you might have caught a glimpse of before, and you will find Dogmeat, your first companion. Make good friends with Dogmeat. Dogmeat is terrific. He protect, he attack, he stores a bunch of crap you don't have room to carry in your own pockets. Try not to think about where he keeps it. Also, in my first playthrough, I really liked using the Red Rocket as my own main camp base, so claim the workshop here too as your own. You can set everything up later, don't worry about anything else for now. There's already lots of useful stuff set up here for you. Now, explore behind the Red Rocket and you'll find a little cave, the Mole Rat Den. In here you will find, well, mole rats naturally enough, but you'll also find yet another fusion core, amongst a bunch of other loot you can snatch up, including more ammo, more guns, and some more bobby pins. Hey, remember that safe we left behind in the root cellar? Well, did you spot the other safes in some of the other houses as well? Might be time to backtrack a bit soon. But before you do, in a little especially radioactive corner of the cave, you will find that power core I was talking about. Be quick, those ticks sound exactly like a Geiger counter for a reason. Because it's a Geiger counter, and you're Pip-Boy, and you're being irradiated. Quick now! Loot everything else you like in the cave and back out again. Now you see those power lines? Follow them down and you'll find Abernathy Farm at the base of one of the towers nearby. Free food here. Plus, Connie can be traded with and make sure you have a chat with this guy. And be friendly. A little chat later and you have just unlocked your very first side quest. Before you leave the farm, have a poke around the old trailer at the back of the farm. More ammo, more healing items and useful junk here as well. Now... 
If you like, you can do the Abernethy quest immediately. Remember that radar dish? Well, luckily we have a fast travel point unlocked really nearby, huh? What a useful coincidence I have created for you by choosing that anti-clockwise path around the lake. So you can zerp over there, you can head inside the little mini dungeon inside the building. There's more cranky raiders, take your time, pick them off, and oh my, look who has a minigun now. And a few hundred bullets to throw out of it. Have a poke around, loot the whole place, find the quest item, help yourself to yet another fusion core, and you'll be on your way back to the farm before you know it. Pockets full of loot and ballistic death. Now! Are you getting the point I've been trying to make yet? <laughs> Fallout 4 is a game that really rewards exploration. I've not even shown you all the things you can find at the tiny little farm alone yet, never mind the other places we've visited. But I'm not here to spoil everything for you, I just wanted to impress upon you that beelining towards the quest markers is really not the best way to play a Fallout game, and certainly not this one. At this point, I'm sure you get it, right? Take your time, explore, poke around, investigate, there is stuff everywhere and so many little stories everywhere but very quickly now and i'm talking about in less than an hour's worth of you know real in-game time and before you've even triggered the initial main quest line at all or been anywhere close to it you've got a bunch of food you've got a bunch of healing items you're fully armored up you've got a bag full of various weapons for whatever your personal combat style or taste is you've got ammo you've got power armor you've got spare fusion cores for that power armor you're more than likely leveled up at least twice already you've got a companion you've got your first base too in fact if you count sanctuary you've got several fast travel locations unlocked you've made friends at a farm nearby that endless amounts of food and along the way you've taught yourself about a bunch of the basic underlying mechanical systems of the game <gasps> now if you feel at all unprepared to start the actual mainline questing at this point maybe you'd be happier playing a simpler game can do crush perhaps or maybe you'd like to sit down in the corner and draw a nice little moo cow with the crayons over there or something <laughs> Why so passive-aggressive, Blunty? There's no need for that. Come on. But what I've done here is got you amazingly well set up to dig deep into this humongous game, and you have barely left the starting area and haven't even met the first major NPCs yet. Now off you go. Head on down that very inviting road past the Red Rocket. Adventure awaits you. Enjoy. Have fun. Good luck. And say thank you, Blunty. This was very helpful, Blunty. I will share this around, Blunty, to all of my friends who want to play this game, Blunty. And I will sit here and thank my patrons, whose above me on support is glorious and wonderful. Thank you ever so much. And oh man, I can't wait to dig into this game again. Even just recording the bits I needed for this very tutorial video, I, just, I wanted to keep playing. I had to force myself to stop and record this voiceover for you. <laughs> Catch you next time.